Well, I'm Vern Solberg, and uh, I'm uh, delighted to be here talking to the folks at uh, PC Design West. It's always my favorite conference. Uh, system and package technology is where we combine several functions within a single package outline. And that could be uh, a number of semiconductors and semiconductors and passive devices, all, uh, all confined within a single uh, substrate, which they refer to as a package substrate. And that's designed so that it can be mounted to a printed circuit board. So that, that little system is probably what you have in your cell phone uh, that does everything you imagine needs to be done. Well, the, with Flipship, the die that is actually designed for wire bond is converted into something that could be placed directly onto a package substrate. To do that, they have to put uh, metalized bumps on the bottom surface in the place of where you would normally wire bond. With wire bond, they actually place the die down, uh, they bond it to a substrate, and then they use most, most commonly gold or thin copper wire to connect from the terminals on the die down to the substrate surface. And then it's rerouted on the substrate to eventually uh, interact with the, uh, the printed circuit board. The semiconductor package will have a semiconductor die within it. So uh, basically the die is, is the semiconductor, or it could be a memory, it could be any, any, any function. Uh, and it simply has to be packaged so we can mount it to a printed circuit board. The bare die can be mounted to the printed circuit board, but there are some limits on size of the die. If it's very small, we could we could uh, we could possibly mount the die directly on the board, um, but it, it requires some reinforcement because the, the silicon die is very thin and, and very delicate, and we don't want it to crack. So. If you mount the die directly to the printed circuit board or even to the packet substrate, there's usually a, uh, a polymer that's, that's uh, applied to reinforce that die and strengthen it. But, uh, so anyway, the package has a die in it. And the die is, is the function within the package. The die is, that's the, that's the base. You are packaging the die. Without the die, you have no function. The die is a semiconductor that is designed to do a particular function. And it could be a processor, it could be a controller. It's, it's, it's a key part of the electronic product. But it has to be packaged. In most cases, they'll package it so they can test it. And once it's tested, now you can use it on the board. The stacking uh, die within a package is, is uh, very commonly used today. Um, it began doing this probably back in the, in the mid 90s, uh, beginning with just a couple of die, and then and it's seen uh, die stacking uh, with as many as 10 die. And that's become very complex because the die have to be, first of all, bonded to the package substrate, wire bonded, and then perhaps another spacer has to be put down, and then a die on top of that and wire bonded. And it's, it's a very uh, sequential process anywhere along the line you could break something and they'd have to start over so uh, but die stacking is uh, is widely used today for system and package applications or by combining uh, or condensing memory they, they'll stack memory die on top of one another and to get more memory into a single package outline the idea is to save space on the board and so die stacking allows them to stack a lot of product on one substrate and, uh, and save space. Wafer level is typically referred to the silicon wafer. That's what they that's referred to as a wafer. And they will use a, uh, a metalized silicon wafer and they will, uh, the metalization uh, includes conductors that will, will uh, allow you to attach a die and reroute the, the terminals on the die to a, a wider spacing. So that's fan out. Now there's also a panel level technology. It's, it's quite a bit different. They could make a silicon panel, but that would be a little bit expensive. So they will use other materials. And for instance, uh, glass has become a candidate. And there's also some, um, some uh, very stable uh, organic materials that have been developed that could be used as a base 
example of that work and it, uh, it just allows very fine interconnect between the die and uh, eventually the printed circuit board. So, now there are some panel technologies that uh, have evolved and uh, I'm not, I won't take the time to explain the details of that but uh, it, it requires some metallization actually onto the surface of the die and uh, that's a whole different topic. SIP is, is an acronym for System Impact. Uh, so a flip chip could be part of that, that component set. Uh, and they could be side by side on a substrate. Uh, and that would be actually two dimensional. And uh, they make a little system. And these, these uh, die are, are, are selected to be compatible to develop a system-like operation that they're combined onto one substrate and interconnected on the substrate. So all, most of the interconnection between those die are on this little substrate, and I'm talking about a package substrate, that is then designed to mount to the printed circuit board, typically as a ball grid or a pro. Actually, they, for a printed circuit board, I think we've got uh, some pretty good uh, uh, protocol for most of that. Some companies uh, have the capability for laser drilling. We can make very small vias. We can put the uh, we can put the via directly into the land pattern of the device and go to the layer right below, or continue by um, stacking these vias. Or preferred is offset vias, where they kind of stagger, stagger, stagger. So you have. Uh, um, the concentration of, of uh, force is not is spread out. That data is really it's pretty well well established. Uh, recommendations on that, and it's really each, each supplier might have some recommendations. And I would always recommend for a PC designer uh, use the supplier as their primary resource, especially when dealing with with vias and blind vias and buried vias and things like that, so they understand the um, things like the cost, reliability, and things that they, they, the, the board supplier will have a lot of data that they can share with the designer when they're advising them on the right way and, and probably the least, uh, least desirable way to do things. I don't have a top design guideline. There's design guidelines for a lot of things. And a lot of it has to do with the materials you're using and the processes you're using. Uh, and there's design guidelines specific to those materials and processes. Um, I try to refer to IPC guidance as much as possible. Um, they usually have classifications uh, as one, two, let's we'll say one, two, and three. When you get to three, that's uh, probably a little, um, a little more exacting. Uh, finer lines and spaces, smaller holes and the like, and but there's also a dollar sign attached to some of that because uh, of uh, yield on the plant circuit board. But, um, I, I, I try to refer to IPC where possible. If I don't find my answers in IPC guidance, uh, then I'll uh, refer the guidance from the board supplier. And uh, companies like Sierra has a lot of guidance documents, and uh, that's the best place to start. Interesting about BGA, um, why did BGA uh, evolve? Um, mainly because we needed to get more I.O. in the smaller space. With the lead frame devices that were formerly mainstream, uh, they were very limited because as you get more I.O., the package started to grow and grow and grow. But by putting the, the terminals underneath the die, underneath the package, we were able to keep things confined to the area of the, of the uh, substrate, uh, the package substrate. And so uh, it's just the most most practical way of, of packaging semiconductors. Uh, and it's something that uh, is very compatible with assembly processing. Lead frame components, uh, very fine pitch, always had problems with uh, coplanarity. With the ball grid array, that, uh, that's kind of gone away and, and the yield on ball grid array packaging is, is simply uncompromised. 